Ladies and gentlemen, imagine a world where the walls of silence grow thicker by the day, stifling the voices of those that have the potential to change it. I stand before you today as a high school student who has known the profound struggle of staying silent, the agony of self-censorship, and the frustration of being told to hush in order to avoid conflict. It's a story familiar to many of us, isn't it? In my younger years, I was extremely outspoken, unapologetically expressing my thoughts and expressions to the rest of the world. But as I grew older, I encountered a society that preferred conformity to conviction. I would hear things like, don't be a leader, don't stand up for others, it keeps you out of trouble. Perhaps you've experienced something similar in your own lives, where the cacophony of public opinion drowns out the sweet melodies of individuality. This journey, dear friends, led me to question the impact of silence. Silence, the place where our voices are hushed, our opinions diluted, and our power relinquished. In our quest for peace, in our quest for tranquility, we often tend to forget that silence too can often be just as dangerous, if not more. It perpetuates injustice, it fuels discrimination, and in the words of Gandhiji, it holds us back from being the change we wish to see in the world. Soon, I learned to mind my own business, as my voice was stifled to the extent that my academic pursuits were put at risk due to my so-called ill behavior. What did this do? Well, it got rid of the complaints back at home, generating peace and calmness in general, but it becomes imperative to ask, at what cost? At what cost? By stifling my curiosity and impeding the questions that drove my natural creativity, I unwittingly surrendered to the societal machinery, diminishing my unique essence to merely another cog in the system, adhering to societal norms. Quiet, 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 I would hear. So many questions I had within me, the answers to which I did not know, and yet I could never ask them. I remember standing in front of the mirror one fine day, asking the most important question of all. Will I be dumb forever? The loss of one's individuality is saddening to say the least. With age, I realized that not speaking out can keep you out of trouble. But at the same time, it results in the loss of your identity, one that weakens your bonds and connections with some of the people you hold most close and dear to your own heart. Simply put, it makes you irrelevant, to say the least. On my 15th birthday, the, question, the answer to the question in the mirror changed my real muffled voice forever. I began speaking out again, regardless of whether or not people liked what I had to say. Now, clearly this had its advantages. I was able to get my voice heard, my ideas listened to, but most importantly, it gets you respect. Do not expect to be respected until you show the world that you have a voice, that you have a backbone. Whether we like it or not, the world respects power. And more often than not, your voice is an assertion of your power. But in retrospect, I've come to realize that this, this new outspoken person is not the same one as he was 10 years ago. Yes, he speaks out more. Yes, he expresses himself. But there has been a societal confinement, a societal restriction to say the least, something that did not truly allow him to develop in those defining years of his life, which now leads to this muffled voice. Whose voice is it that I echo, that I amplify? Is it my own or that of society? It becomes compelling to question the authenticity of one's self-expression. Do I really even believe in what I have to say? Am I free to say whatever I feel like saying? Of course not. This restraint has been imposed upon us by our own society, by our own educational systems that preach about a so-called filter. Silence can be the breeding ground for some of the most insidious evils known to mankind. As a student who used to study in Poland, I think back to being confronted by school trips 
to cities like Krakow, where we learned about the horrors that took place within the concentration camps of Auschwitz-Birkenau, within the gas chambers of Auschwitz-Birkenau. And as I think back to these trips, I reflect upon the fact that these horrors were not a byproduct of silence. No. Make no mistake, these horrors were a byproduct of strategically choreographed silence by a select group of individuals who stood to benefit from it. And there are three types of silences that we must address here. The first is the silence of the victims. The victims who were silenced, the ones who, who chose to speak out but who, whose voices were not heard. Second, we have the silence of a certain group of high-profile individuals who stood to benefit from it, who chose to advance their strategic interests at the risk of others, at the cost of others. But I believe most dangerous of all, worst of all, is a third type of silence. The silence of not learning from our own history, not learning from the Holocaust. Had we learned from the Holocaust, would situations like Israel and Palestine be happening to this day? As I stand before you all today, delivering this very TEDx talk, there are thousands of innocent young men, women, and children dying in all parts of the world, including Israel, Palestine, and Ukraine, to name a few. Breaking the walls of silence involves breaking the barriers of not learning from our own history, not learning from our own mistakes. And this requires a commitment to truth, a commitment to courage that no syllabus or no textbook can ever teach us. In the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Hence, it falls upon us, the common man, the future generation, to ensure that the voices of others are not merely heard, but rather valued and respected. And I've always tried to pursue this noble objective in whatever shape, way, or form that I can. As I say this, I think back to a poignant outing last year, where I visited a restaurant in Lower Parel that only employed people who could not speak, who communicated using sign language or gestures. Simply put, people who were mute. And while the restaurant had excellent service and the hospitality staff was absolutely wonderful, oftentimes I found myself unable to engage with these people. Upon reflection, I realized that their voices too were being silenced, not by choice, but rather by circumstance. Determined to address this issue, I returned home and continued working on a smart bin project I was developing alongside a friend. Drawing from this technology, I embarked upon a mission to empower these individuals who could not speak. Using technologies like TensorFlow and Keras, and using programming languages such as Python, I meticulously trained an artificial intelligence sign language model that could translate the American sign language gestures into text. Now, I had to take thousands and thousands of images of my own hand and write lines of code in order to make this model a reality. Recognizing the need for accessibility, I then converted this model into a user-friendly web application, which is now available online. And while the model's current accuracy stands at about 70%, I remain committed and dedicated to further refining its capabilities by expanding my data set in advancing my mission to eradicate silence from this world. But that's just one part of the story. Another part of the story is reflecting upon how we, as a society, have failed to incorporate people with special challenges into our everyday lifestyle, into industries like hospitality. Why is it that that restaurant in Lower Parel stood out? It's because it's the only one. It's because others don't do it. Not because they can't, but because they simply choose not to. You know, we express empathy with these individuals, but by doing so, we don't help them break down their walls of silence. No. In order for us to help them break down their walls of silence, we must express solidarity with them. We must work together with them, like that restaurant in Lower Parel. As a STEM student, I always say this. Whether it be STEM or STEAM, whether it be AI or deepfake, it is the ramifications of silence 
the ramifications of the Holocaust that we must aim to address. The science guy is also the humanities guy. And the humanities guy also has an element of the sciences within him. It is the perfect mix of both, the ideation of both, that constitutes public speaking. Reflecting on my own journey, transitioning from an Indian student studying in Poland to a Polish high school student studying in India, I was forced to ask myself the same question. Should I ask questions? Should I risk offending others? Luckily, I did not repeat my second mistake this time. I continued to ask questions, and I did not make the mistake of letting my voice go. It takes us so long to build up our own voices, and yet we are often so quick to let it go. So break the shackles. Engage in the power of public critical conversations and unleash the full potential of your voice. Let's break the walls of silence together. The walls that preempt the silence of the future. It is of no use to do so today. Remember, the Holocaust came back to haunt us. In spite of and despite all the noise and all the verbalization, we still cannot prevent thousands of innocent children dying in all parts of the world to this day. Thank you.